Hello everyone, in today's video we will set up enemy targeting with the combat module for Game Creator. Targeting enemies is a popular mechanic used in many big AAA games, from Devil May Cry to Assassin's Creed. In Assassin's Creed Odyssey, for example, you are playing in large scale battles where you simply need to be able to pick your priority, as it would otherwise be overwhelming. In the previous video I covered the integration with the shooter module, in this one I will cover the melee module. To show how versatile this is, I will be using my dual weapon setup scene that has shooter and melee, as well as have a melee and shooter enemy AI. In order to create this we will need Unity, Game Creator, the melee and combat module. So let's dive in. Now I am using my um, dual weapon setup scene, um, just to show you how versatile the targeting system really is. So I will have a gun and a katana. Um, I have two enemies, so a melee enemy and a shooter enemy. Um, yes, as you can see, I did copy-paste their patrol, so it looks really similar. Not the best idea, obviously, but it works. Now, I will, you know, target the enemy. Um, I added a little uh, scan there, uh, just for fun. Um, but as you can see, that works the same as in the shooter video. Now I'm going to switch to my um, katana. And the way targeting works is um, it's the same button, but you long press it. And there you go. So the difference is, is because there's no actual um, zooming, for example, like in the, um, you know, in the shooter module, you will have to long press the button. Now, no, my enemy AI doesn't have any great, great um, you know, great combos, really basic, enemy but spotted. yeah. So you can target, okay, that one's all nice with the ragdoll. Um, you can target both types of enemies, um, but the difference is, is with the shooter module, you need to aim and then um, press Q in this case. Um, with the melee uh, module, you need to long press Q because we're not actually aiming uh, beforehand. So same button, different uh, different order of actions basically. Now the great thing here is is that if you start off with a you know a shooter game for example, and then halfway through to decide you know you want to switch it up, go with a melee game or you know have both for example. Um, you don't actually have to change anything. The targeting will work by default. Um, it's been added like that in the latest update of the combat module and that's well, honestly just great. So let's set this up. Now for the purpose of this tutorial, I will be um, reusing um, you know, a simple scene that has a player, um, and two different types of enemy characters. So I have one that uses um, a gun and I have one that uses a sword. Now the reason I'm doing that <coughs> is because I want to show um, how versatile the uh, targeting system really is and it doesn't really matter what types of enemies you are using. Um, one system covers it all. Now to even emphasize that I am um, using my dual weapon setup so I will have a katana and a pistol. Um, obviously I'll be focusing on the melee here um, but you know you could have seen in the, the video just before this the short demonstration that both work. Now I'm going to focus on melee here so I'm not going to focus on um, on the shooter but it was good to demonstrate that it actually did work. Now in order to set this up we will uh, address the player first so nice thing here is that all you really need is a uh, prefab. So if you go to uh, plugins, fire chicken games, combats, examples, and then assets, you have prefabs and you have the player targeter. Now, yes, you can just set this up yourself, um, but I actually like that it's not going to be again something that is on the player. As you can see my list is already quite long and it might even be longer at some point. So I'm happy this is something that doesn't require to be on the player itself. 
Now we do need to drag in the player, um, but that's literally where it ends. So that's really nice. Um, but yeah, as you can see, this is something you could just set up yourself uh, somewhere else if you wanted to. Now you can change the targeting buttons. Um, obviously, for those using a controller, I would recommend so. Um, but it's really nice that it's here and you don't require any additional triggers. So, good stuff. Now we will go to our two enemies. Um, in my shooter video, I just duplicated them. Um, but because they're, uh, they have different behaviors here, I'm not going to duplicate. Um, so I'll manually set them up. So you have to go on the character itself. Um, and let's add um, two things. So the first one is targetable. And the second one is local variables. Now we're going to start with setting up the local variables. So the first one will be a string because this is going to represent his name. So enemy shooter and this name will be, God, I don't know, um, just my name again. Let's just keep it like that. And this will be a quick bool um, that will allow us to see if our character is alive. Now, if the character no longer is alive, we no longer want him to be a targetable object. Um, if you keep that, it messes up your gameplay flow a lot. Because um, if you're going to you know, target dead bodies in a big combat scene, that's not really that great. So we're going to keep it like that. Um, now we are going to um, pick our target indicator as well so let me drag that in and this is going to call out my name now this basically decides the, uh, decides the color of the text so really cool just going to keep it close to black but not black um, I'm pretty sure there's not supposed to be. There we go. Now, next up, we're going to add two empties. Um, let's set up the first one first. So this empty um, will house um, what we're going to. What is going to happen once we actually target the enemy? Now, there's so much you can do with this. Honestly, you could. There's so many different things you could be setting up here. Um, you know, you could set up if he um, you know changes his behavior that he knows he's targeted I'm going to keep it simple um, I'm going to um, reactivate his UI so his health bar so I don't know if you've seen uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey but you will only see health bars once you actually target an enemy and you will see his level now this is not an RPG so there won't be any levels um, but um, I am going to do the same with the health bar and I'm going to add a you know a quick fake a scanning uh, effect as well so we're going to set active his health bar so that means I disabled it by default um, which is his UI I'm going to change um, material um, which is going to be a hologram type effect now I will put a link in the description um, on how to create this um, basically it's a shader graph um, shader um, made in a tutorial so you know you can do it yourself um, it's a it's cool you can adjust it it's a, it's a really nice shader now we want to make sure that we're changing his uh, body so you know don't drag in the character changing the actual body because um, that's the one that houses the material now I'm going to add a weight here of about just going to do three seconds this time I thought it was a bit long in the demo and then all of this is going to go back to normal so basically you know creating the um, well the you know, it's type of scanning effect. Now, I'm not really sure I can find it like this. Maybe I can. Let 
looks like this is it I'm not sure I might be wrong but it looks like that's actually it now I'm going to duplicate this one um, this is going to be target active and target inactive now in the inactive I'm not going to mess with the first three but I'm going to keep these two just want to make sure that um, all of those things remain inactive um, straight away so the moment you switch your target it will by default um, switch out of the the scanning material effect basically um, so that's why we're doing this otherwise it would still wait those three seconds before anything would happen so we're going to keep it simple and effective now on our character we will drag these in and there we go so we have both of these set up now our original target indicator um, puts his uh, his name above his head with an arrow now we can um, use the name because you know I set up uh, I'm going to use reuse the name in this case so enemy shooter because this is going to be enemy melee so it's good to know that we can use the name I don't want the arrow though because the arrow is going to cause a conflict with the health bar above his head so I'm simply going to remove the arrow so this is the original target indicator I'm going to drag that in our scene here um, I find this the easiest way to add it obviously you can just open up the prefab yourself now let's unpack this one <coughs> go to background and I'm just going to disable the image I'm not going to mess too much with it that's it just disabling the image and there we have it now let's rename this to something else um, it's a long name but we're just going to keep it like this name only going to remove this and our character will be using that and there we go now by default um, this offset is already set so that's really nice um, nothing you need to do for that um, it will um, display above the head now obviously if you want to tweak this I might actually have to tweak it because I already have something else displaying above the head I think this should be enough but you can tweak the values now everything else looks alright but there's one more thing we need to do um, and that's actually um, making sure we call out the is alive um, once he actually dies now what I've done for um, my setup, if he dies, he's going to ragdoll and we're going to call out that bull again, um, a local variable, I'm going to drag in my character here, is alive, is disabled. And that's it. Now he will be targetable, um, he has everything he needs um, set up, our player has everything he needs. Um, so that's it really for our character now I'm going to quickly duplicate um, this for our melee character I'm going to give him a different name obviously as he is a different character uh, type of character anyway um, so let's do that <laughs> Cool, so second character is completely set up now as well. Um, one small change is actually the offset of our name. So I changed that to 1.5, so let's do that the same for this character as um, 2.1 is actually a way too high, so it, it will just float about here. So this will put it right above um, the uh, health bar um, we will see for a brief moment as well. So, really nice there. Now, that's it. That's both characters set up. So, let's have a look um, and see what this actually looks like in action and how it works. Now, going to. I don't know why I picked up ammo. Our swords don't need ammo. I guess that's a habit so as you can see long pressing it and it's um, you know it quickly scanned him now 
I should have actually moved um, his name um, inside of his uh, health bar UI would have made more sense and used a different type of target. Um, but yeah, basically that's what the quick scan would look like. So I would, you know, remove the name somewhere else. Now, um, let's actually finish these guys off. So I'm going to start with the shooter one as um, by default, I won't be able to block his bullets. Enemy spotted. Uh, so it's a bit lame, but yeah, Enemy spotted. it works. Okay, he's got some moves, um, but he doesn't seem to do anything anywhere. Anyway, I'll finish him off. There we go. Um, so yeah, you know, I didn't set up any great behavior for uh, melee yet, so it looked a bit lame. Um, but there you have it, um, fully functional targeting, um, set up exactly the same as for the, as for the you know shooter module. Um, slight difference in how you actually activate it, um, but it makes sense uh, considering there's no actual zooming here um, because we're not using a gun. So really simple setup. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Um, we will be uh, using another great feature in the next video, which is the weapon stash. Um, part of the reason as well why I wanted to have uh, multiple weapons already. Um, the combat module has something really cool with the weapon stash. It's uh, it's a you know a unique feature. Again, reminiscent of what you'd see in. Uh, in a game like uh, you know Devil May Cry, where you have multiple weapons set up, and you need to be able to switchly talk toggle through them, so really cool feature. Um, I will see you next time.